there. I'm more optimistic than you, um, not least because I think most of our politicians are actually inept, not very good at their jobs and have no plan whatsoever except to just sort of make a decision next week based on whatever's happening next week, you know? I think you've probably got it on the, on, on the right track with these behavioural scientists. I think they've probably got all sorts of plans that they'd like to see society becoming. But hopefully they're not the people making the final decision. It's just so hard to know. But, you know, it's a bit depressing when you think that maybe they're threatening vaccine passports to make people get vaccinated. Because yeah. like, in a best hope scenario, that's, that's blackmail. That's yes. a bit depressing. That's kind of what I think. And I think it's in, that's absolutely disgraceful if it's true. But I think that's about as far as it's got. Well, it could be. But on the other hand, I'm sure that for many governments, there's something quite alluring about the idea of this digital ID yeah. and a social credit system. It's an extremely useful tool for um, forcing social control. Yeah. And hopefully we would never see anything like that in the UK. Mm. But the thing to understand about the kind of behavioural science approach that's been so obvious during COVID is something they call incrementalism. Yeah. So they bring things in bit by right. bit. Yeah. This was actually announced last summer when they were talking about mar mm. masks. Matt Hancock said in Parliament, well, we'll introduce them on, on transport and then we'll introduce them in chunks. Yeah. It's not often they tell you that no. that's what they're doing, right. but he said that then. They would introduce right. it in chunks. The plan was always to get to masks, yeah. you know, everywhere. And they did the same with vaccinations. They started off saying we vaccinate the vulnerable, we only need to vaccinate 15 million people, then we'll vaccinate the over 60s, then it's going to be the over 50s, and now they're talking about vaccinating people who are under 12. Exactly. And then it's going to be pets and it's going to be houseplants. I don't, yeah. know, I don't, know, where, I don't know where the vaccination mm. target ends. But if you don't want a Chinese social credit system, which may or may never be on the cards, mm. what you have to do is say no in the first place yeah. to anything which mm. could lead by a series of steps of incrementalism to it. So you say no to the vaccine passport. Yeah doesn't make and there's no scientific justification no. for it anyway according right. to the select committee that investigated well, it what's the point of it because all it means is you go into a venue where everyone's been vaccinated it doesn't mean they haven't got covid does it no nine out of ten of us have got antibodies the vaccine doesn't stop you transmitting covid although it may help yeah. so there was no scientific justification for it so if you don't want to end up with that chinese social credit system you say no right now to vaccine passports and mm. you say right now to a, right you say no right now to a health app that monitors your shopping and ensures you comply with nhs checks yes well i'm already saying no to it so you don't have to convince me <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now, we were going to talk about Tonya Buxton and Cyprus, um, but we've literally only got about 30 seconds left. The time well, has flown. Just, just quickly, where that, you know, they've got the safe pass there in Cyprus. My mate Tonya, who I'm covering for, says you cannot get into a restaurant, a shop, a bank, anywhere unless you've got a vaccine passport called the safe pass. Wow. And dancing's banned. She says Cyprus isn't How very can much they not fun be at the moment. dancing in Cyprus? There is no dancing in Cyprus, so we what don't want to be like smashing? Cyprus. Can you do any of that? I, I'm sure there's some rules about I'll be, it. I'll be smashing some plates <laughs> if I was sitting there now, I'll tell you that. Blimey. Dreadful. Well, listen, we'll see you next week, hopefully, um, and uh, we'll carry on with this because this is a big, big, big point of view that you're hearing from Laura Dodsworth, and she's absolutely right on the money. 